ideals developed by concentration. Through our paltry stir and strife glows the wished ideal, and longing molds in clay what life carves in the marble real. Lowell We often hear people spoken of as idealists. The fact is we are all idealists to a certain extent, and upon the ideals we picture depends our ultimate success. You must have the mental image if you are to produce the material thing. Everything is first created in the mind. When you control your thoughts, you become a creator. You receive divine ideas and shape them to your individual needs. All things of this world are to you just what you think they are. Your happiness and success depend upon your ideals. You are responsible for every condition you go through, either consciously or unconsciously. The next step you take determines the succeeding step. Remember this, it is a valuable lesson. By concentrating on each step as you go along, you can save a lot of waste steps and will be able to choose a straight path instead of a roundabout road. Concentrate your ideals and they will become material actualities. Through concentration we work out our ideals in physical life. Your future depends upon the ideals you are forming now. Your past ideals are determining your present. Therefore, if you want a bright future, you must begin to prepare for it today. If persons could only realize that they can only injure themselves, that when they are apparently injuring others, they are really injuring themselves, what a different world this would be. We say a man is as changeable as the weather. What is meant is his ideals change. Every time you change your ideal, you think differently. You become like a rudderless boat on an ocean. Therefore, realize the importance of holding to your ideal until it becomes a reality. You get up in the morning determined that nothing will make you lose your temper. This is your ideal of a person of real strength and poise. Something takes place that upsets you completely and you lose your temper. For the time being, you forget your ideal. If you had just thought a second of what a well-poised person implies, you would not have become angry. You lose your poise when you forget your ideal. Each time we allow our ideals to be shattered, we also weaken our willpower. Holding to your ideals develops willpower. Don't forget this. Why do so many men fail? Because they don't hold to their ideal until it becomes a mental habit. When they concentrate on it, to the exclusion of all other things, it becomes a reality. I am that which I think myself to be. Ideals are reflected to us from the unseen spirit. The laws of matter and spirit are not the same. One can be broken, but not the other. To the extent that ideals are kept is your future assured. It was never intended that man should suffer. He has brought it upon himself by disobeying the laws of nature. He knows them so, cannot plead ignorance. Why does he break them? Because he does not pay attention to those ideals flashed to him from the infinite spirit. Life is but one continuous unfoldment, and you can be happy every step of the way, or miserable, as you please. It all depends upon how we entertain those silent whisperings that come from we know not where. We cannot hear them with mortal ear, but from the silence they come as if they were dreams, not to you or me alone, but to everyone. In this way the grandest thoughts come to us, to use or abuse. So search not in treasured volumes for noble thoughts, but within, and bright and glowing vision will come to be realized now and hereafter. You must give some hours to concentrated consistent, persistent thought. You must study yourself and your weaknesses. No man gets over a fence by wishing himself on the other side. He must climb. No man gets out of the rut of dull, tiresome, monotonous life by merely wishing himself out of the rut. He must climb. If you are standing still or going backward, there is something wrong. You are the man to find out what is wrong. Don't think that you are neglected, or not understood, or not appreciated. Such thoughts are the thoughts of failure. Think hard about the fact that men who have got what you envy 
got it by working for it. Don't pity yourself, criticize yourself. You know that the only thing in the world that you have got to count upon is yourself. Lesson 18. Mental Control Through Creation I attended a banquet of inventors recently. Each inventor gave a short talk on something he thought would be accomplished in the future. Many very much needed things were spoken of. One inventor spoke of the possibilities of wireless telephone. Distance, he said, would shortly be annihilated. He thought we would soon be able to talk to the man in the submarine forty fathoms below the surface and a thousand miles away. When he got through, he asked if there were any that doubted what he said. No one spoke up. This was not a case of tactful politeness, as inventors like to argue, but a case where no one present really doubted that the inventor's vision would, in the future, materialize. These shrewd men, some real geniuses, all thought we would in time be able to talk to those a thousand miles away without media. Now if we can make an instrument so wonderful that we can send wireless messages a thousand miles, is there any reason why we should not, through mental control, transmit messages from one person to another? The wireless message should not be as easy to send as the projected thought. The day will come when all business will employ highly developed persons to send out influences. These influences will be so dominating that employees will be partly controlled by them, and so you will profit more and more by your mental powers and depend on them to draw you to all forces of a helping nature. You will be constantly sending out suggestions to your employees and friends. They will receive these unconsciously, but in case yours is the stronger personality, they will carry them out the same as if you had spoken them. This is being done even today. A finely organized company secures the combined effort of all its men. They may be each doing a different kind of work, but all work to bring about the very best results. The whole atmosphere is impregnated with a high standard of workmanship. Everyone feels he must do his best. He could not be in such surroundings and be satisfied to do anything but his best work. A business will exceed only to the extent that the efforts of all are coordinated toward one result. At least one person is needed to direct all toward the desired end. The person at the head does not have to exactly outline to the others what steps to take, but he must possess the mental power of control over others. An up-to-date business letter is not written in a casual, commonplace way today. The writer tries to convey something he thinks the receiver will be interested to know. In this way, he awakens a responsive spirit. Sometimes just the addition of a word or two will change a letter of the matter-of-fact style to one that compels a response. It is not always what is actually in a letter, but the spirit which it breathes that brings the results. That intangible something that defies analysis is the projected thought of the matter that brings back the harvest that it claims. But we should not always claim success for ourselves only. If you are anxious that some friend or relative should succeed, Think of this person as becoming successful. Picture him in the position you would like to see him in. If he has a weakness, desire and command that it be strengthened. Think of his shortcomings, which belong to his negative nature, as being replaced by positive qualities. Take a certain part of the day to send him thoughts of upbuilding nature. You can in this way arouse his mental powers into activity, and once aroused, they will assert themselves and claim their own. We can accomplish a great deal more than many of us are ready to believe by sending to another our direct, positive, and controlling suggestions of leadership, but whether a man is a success or not is greatly determined by the way he acts on the suggestions he receives. We either advance or decline. We never stand still. Every time we accomplish something, it gives us ability to do greater things. The bigger the attempt undertaken, the greater the things accomplished in the future. 
as a business grows the head of the business also has to grow he must advance and be ever the guiding influence by his power to control he inspires confidence in those associated with him often employees are superior to their employers in some qualities and if they had studied instead of neglected their development they could have been employers of more commanding influence than those whom they serve through your mental power you can generate in another enthusiasm and the spirit of success which somehow furnishes an impetus to do something worth while and concentrated mental control there is a latent power more potent than physical force the person becomes aware that the attitude of the mind has a power of controlling directing and governing other forces he has been placed in an attitude capable of acquiring that which he desires all of us no matter how strong we are are affected by the mental forces of our environment there is no one that can remain neutral to influences the mind cannot be freed from the forces of a place if the environment of your place of business is not helpful it will be harmful that is why a change of position will often do a person a great deal of good no person was ever intended to live alone if you are shut up with only your own thoughts you suffer from mental starvation the mind becomes narrow the mental powers weaken living alone often causes some of the milder forms of insanity if children do not play with those their own age but associate with only older people they will take on the actions of the older people the same is true of older persons if they associate with people younger than they are they will take on the spirit of youth if you wish to retain your youth you need the influences of youth like attracts like all over the world the thought element plays a great part in our lives every business must not only command physical effort but it must also command thought effort there must be coordination of thought all employers should aim to secure employees that think along similar lines they will work in fuller sympathy with each other they will better understand each other this enables them to help each other which would be utterly impossible if they were not in sympathy with each other it is this that goes to make up a perfect organization which directs and influences them toward the one end instead of each person being a separate unit each one is like a spoke in a big wheel each member carries his own load and he would not think of shirking any one working in such an atmosphere could not help turning out his best work all great leaders must be able to inspire this cooperative spirit they first secure assistance through their mental control then they make their assistants realize the value of mental control soon there is a close bond between them they are working toward a single purpose they profit by their combined effort the result is that they accomplish much if your business is conducted in the right spirit you can instill your thoughts and your ideas into your employees your methods and ideas become theirs they don't know it but your mental forces are shaping their work they are just as certain to produce results as any physical force in nature the up-to-date businessman of the future is going to take pains to get his employees to think and reason better he will not want them to become depressed or discouraged there is time that instead of being wasted he will endeavor to have them use in concentrated effort that will be profitable to both employer and employed there must be more of the spirit of justice entering into the business of the future there is a firm i know that will not hire an employee until he has filled out an application blank no doubt those that fill it out think it is a foolishness but it is not a capable manager can look over this application blank and pretty nearly tell if this person will fit into his management the main thing he wants to know is the applicant's capacity for efficient cooperative effort he wants persons that have faith in themselves he wants them to realize that when they talk of misfortunes and become blue they are likely to communicate the same depressing influence to others 
the up-to-date manager wants to guard against hiring employees who will obstruct his success. You must realize that every moment spent in thinking of your difficulties of the past, every moment spent in bad company, is attracting to you all that is bad, is attracting influences that must be shaken off before you can advance. Many firms prefer to hire employees that never worked before so that they have nothing to unlearn. They are then not trained, but have had no bad business habits to overcome. They are more easily guided and grasp the new materials more effectively because they are not contrary to what they have already learned. They are at once started on the right road, and as they cooperate readily, they receive the mental support of the management and learning the methods that have been perfected. This inspires confidence in themselves, and they soon become efficient and, finally, skilled workers. Most big business firms today employ efficiency experts. Each day or week, they are in a different department. They earn their money because they familiarize persons with very little business experience, with plans that have taken the expert years of training and much money to perfect. The attitude we take has a great deal more to do with our success than most of us realize. We must be able to generate those forces that are helpful. There is a wonderful power in the thought rightly controlled and projected, and we must, through concentration, develop this power to the fullest possible extent. We are surrounded by many forces of which we know but little at present. Our knowledge of these is to be wonderfully increased. Each year we learn more about these psychic forces which are full of possibilities of which we are not even dimly conscious. We must believe in mental control, learn more about it, and use it, if we want to command these higher powers and forces which will unquestionably direct the lives of countless future generations.